Good afternoon. I'm Arun Serafin with the Emerging Technologies Institute at the National Defense Industrial Association. Thank you to all attendees for your support of NDIA and ETI, and thank you for joining us today for today's webinar, Introduction to the Defense Technical Information Center, or DTIC, with Mr. Christopher Thomas. For background, the Defense Technical Information Center is the DOD field activity responsible for managing DOD industry, academic, and public access to defense-funded scientific research. As a department scientific and technical information knowledge provider, the organization plays a key role in facilitating classified and unclassified information sharing on research and engineering efforts relative to national defense. DTIC also administers the DOD information analysis centers, which bring together subject matter experts to provide a wide array of technical analyses, conduct basic and applied research, and evaluate the state of the art. Today, we'll get to hear about DTIC's mission and activities and the many ways it works with its government, academic, and industry partners, including many NDIA members. Some administrative remarks before we get started. All attendee lines are muted. So if, if you have a question during the webinar, you can submit it, your question in the question box in the webinar panel on the right side of your screen. We will do our best to get through all of the questions during the Q&A session at the end of the presentation. We are recording today's webinar for members unable to attend and for any member who wishes to review the material at a later date. Within the next few days, we'll also be posting the recording to our YouTube channel. Now I'd like to introduce our speaker, Mr. Christopher Thomas. Mr. Christopher Thomas is the administrator of the Defense Technical Information Center and has been doing that job since 2012. In this role, he's responsible for DTIC's technical information missions, such as providing knowledge platforms supporting the defense ST enterprise. Mr. Thomas oversees the fielding of tools supporting defense research collaboration and leads an integrated government and industry team who are engineering DTIC's digital transformation using advanced technologies such as artificial intelligence and machine learning. Mr. Thomas chairs DOD's research data working group to advocate for the unique needs and interests of the ST community to ensure open access to research data. He's also the editor-in-chief of the Journal of DoD Research and Engineering, a quarterly peer-reviewed publication at the controlled, unclassified, CUI, and classified levels that provides a venue for DoD scientists and engineers to publish papers on scientific topics of significant interest to DoD. Mr. Thomas holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Computer Science from Old Dominion University, and a Master of Arts in Economics from George Mason University. I've had the privilege of working with uh, Christopher for many years during my time on Capitol Hill and now at NDIA, and it's a real privilege to have him present this great agency, DTIC, to, to us and NDIA membership. So with that, I'll turn it over to you, Christopher. Thanks for joining us today, and thanks you for presenting this webinar. Thank you, Arun, and thank you for the introduction. Uh, I want to thank NDIA uh, for uh, setting this up for us, and uh, uh, for you all taking your time. I'm going to have uh, Michelle Finley, my chief of staff, is going to ask me questions as we go through the slides to uh, to keep us on track and on pace. For those of you who uh, don't know DTIC, um, DTIC, as uh, Rune was saying, is uh, the DoD central location for uh, knowledge information on science and technology. Um, we have more than 4.7 million records that go back 75 years. So we try to capture the output of all the uh, work that goes on in ST, both the successes and the failures, so that we can uh, give the uh, platform that people can build upon um, and to avoid uh, following dead ends that have already, uh, um, already been encountered. And Michelle? All right, so for our first question, how does the Defense Technical Information Center support the defense science and engineering community? So DTIC uh, is, is at that hub and uh, we're available to all uh, all users in the in the department and our contractors. So if you are working on a uh, on a duty contract and you have a, a PKI uh, card credential, uh, you can get into DTIC with uh, the uh, uh, support of your uh, core. Um, with that, you can get to uh, information independent of which service you might be supporting or agency. Um, we make sure that. Uh, um, if you're uh, an Army contractor, you can still get to Air Force material and Air Force contractor, you can get to Navy material. Uh, we try to make uh, the information available uh, broadly on the public internet that 
the information that is uh, um, distribution A, we call it, uh, freely accessible. And then we also have information on the CIPRANET. And so we work with uh, r and &E and the services to collect their information, to make sure that we're furthering the, uh, uh, the work and the challenges they're trying to uh, support. And we work with the COCOMs to try to make sure that we are collecting their, uh, their IPLs, their integrated priority list, and then coordinating with the, the programs and the projects to make sure that we're solving the right problems. What information is available through DTIX collections? In our, uh, in our collections, as I said, uh, uh, we have millions of records. Most of those are final technical reports, um, conference proceedings, uh, journal articles, uh, briefings and presentations. Uh, we have uh, things like the uh, security classification guides. We have NDIA uh, conference proceedings, uh, grant awards and CIBR awards. Uh, we have a, a wide range of uh, uh, information that uh, uh, comes out of uh, in-progress reports, so work that is currently being done. And as Arun mentioned, we have a, a journal that we produce to give a, uh, a means by which uh, DoD researchers who are working on limited information and classified information can still get that peer review credit for the work that they're doing. Who is DTIC's primary customer and how does DTIC engage with industry? So our primary customer base are our researchers, scientists and engineers who are working on uh, uh, investigation and research. Um, uh, industry makes up a large part of that, uh, that workforce. Uh, we support uh, our industry partners. We work uh, with uh, the labs and the basic research community through which uh, grants uh, um, are, are released to uh, academia. And we work inside of the FFRDCs to collect their information and their results to make sure those are also available. And um, on our IAC program, our uh, um, uh, information analysis centers, uh, we work a lot with PEOs and PMs to uh, uh, help them get their requirements supported and, and on contract. Um, one of our, uh, our real challenges as we do all this is making sure that we can put as much information out to the researchers as possible uh, while protecting that information. We also support uh, a lot of uh, questions and answers, how much work is being done in what area, uh, how much money is being spent, um, how many projects do we have, what's the technical maturity. And we've been working most recently to try to answer the questions coming from Ms. Shu uh, on uh, tech transition and innovation, trying to see how we can show that the work being done in s and matures and goes into systems of records and is available um, and, and continues to be uh, uh, continuously improved. How does industry fit into that customer base? Well, as I said, um, uh, industry does a lot of our uh, research in the department uh, through contracts, uh, through work in the labs, uh, as CETA contractors, uh, helping uh, people in the Pentagon. And so our industry connections really uh, are pretty broad and uh, support a, a wide range. I think the industry people do the same, have the same roles as, uh, as our uh, government uh, uh, customers. So it's a range of things and we need to make sure that our information is being put out uh, to do a range of different things and to make sure that we can uh, support uh, different uh, activities and uh, help them answer their questions. Do we collect STTR information? Um, so we collect uh, both IRD, uh, SCTR, CIBR, uh, grant information, um, uh, we try to make sure that uh, from the uh, uh, CIBR uh, side, we're both helping them with the uh, uh, CIBR awards and putting that up in our tools, tracking that, but we also collect the CIBR outcomes in the same way we collect other technical uh, results. Where does DTIC fit into the usd r &E organization? So DTIC uh, supports the uh, deputy chief technology officer for s and it's, it's really, I would say, the core part of uh, r and that came out of uh, ATNL. Uh, uh, r and &E has expanded beyond that, but the, uh, the core uh, group of uh, uh, efforts that lead the labs, that work with the FFRDCs, that do uh, work with academia and the basic research. Um, and so we, uh, we work directly for uh, Dr. Steve uh, Wax, uh, who then uh, reports up to the r and &E front office. From a user perspective, what is unique about DTIC? 
So as I, as I said earlier, um, um, we're the one place that uh, collects all the information, uh, both the unclassified and the classified, the CUI uh, limited information, and we make it available across all those different boundaries. So if you're working in the Air Force, they have their portal and their uh, access controls and the Navy has their access controls. Uh, we span all those. And so we, we really allow communities to work together. We support the communities of interest, uh, Reliance 21. We try to make sure that people working together um, across agencies and across uh, industry uh, can come together. Um, we wanna make sure that the, the war fighters uh, can be, inter, uh, you know, talk to the, uh, the solutions providers so that, that, that we're solving the right kinds of problems. Can you provide a brief description of what's included in technical information? So, um, as I was saying earlier, technical information really is the, uh, uh, a wide ranging uh, array of information. Um, we put uh, um, into final technical reports. And so traditionally a final technical report was a 100 page document, but we know today that a lot of final reports are briefings and presentations and uh, recommendations and um, uh, 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 market surveys and things. And so really a uh, technical report spans a lot of different areas that really just document what was found and what was done um, and what the results were from uh, research and, and engineering. One of the applications that DTIC provides is the Industry Independent Research and Development Database. Can you tell us a little more about that application? So IRD is uh, uh, an activity where you all receive funds as a uh, percent of the work that you're doing. And uh, DTIC collects that uh, research and development reports on an annual basis. Um, one of the things that, uh, that we do is we try to make sure that those uh, outcomes and reports and what you're working on is made available inside the department. Uh, this is actually an area where uh, we've worked with NDIA in the past. Uh, several years ago, we looked at what the fields were and how we were collecting it. And we, we looked to you all to help us uh, understand how you thought it was going, what the needs were. I think it's probably a good time for us to take another pause and look at IRD and see what we can do to make sure that you're getting your message uh, through of what you're working on and what you want the government to be aware of uh, and to make sure that it's uh, as accessible as possible. Uh, we have a, uh, um, a challenge with IRD and the way it's being collected right now because it's all considered uh, trade secret proprietary. And I'd like to investigate if there are options that we could um, work with you all and you could identify aspects of it that are uh, not proprietary so that uh, maybe the CETA contractors working in the government and reviewing it could have access um, and have maybe a, a proprietary uh, attachment or addendum. Uh, but I think it's just something that we need to pursue to make sure that uh, we're getting the most value out of it and you're getting the most uh, from the, the uh, information you're providing us. As a valuable part of DTIC, how do the information analysis centers support DTIC's mission? So our IX uh, are about as old as DTIC. Um, the, the real mission of the IX is uh, the same as uh, the rest of what DTIC does is sharing information and knowledge. But what they add is a, an ability for us to answer questions. And so um, in the department, there's not really a way for people to do small transactions, right? To pay for uh, a small amount of work. And so what we have is DTIC is funded to provide up to four hours of, of research and investigation uh, to uh, people working on DOD projects. Um, if you're starting a new project, uh, we'll give you a, a baseline of what exists in the literature that's available. Um, the IX go further. And if uh, uh, people need support in doing uh, some engineering, uh, prototyping, analysis work, we actually have a, a contract relationship through the Air Force. Um, and uh, we have 25 vendors who allow um, uh, more in-depth research and, and, and activities, prototyping, fielding, testing. Um, that's actually an opportunity for uh, industry to join in uh, with our, uh, our established vendors. We make it so that it's easy for them to add a sub. So if you become aware of a, uh, an activity or an opportunity that you think you can contribute to, uh, we think it's a way that you could uh, uh, try to work with those companies as they competitively bid for additional work. Can industry participate in the subject matter expert network that the IAX have? So, uh, thank you, Michelle. I always forget that. So, the uh, um, 
the IAX and answering those questions don't just rely on uh, uh, the knowledge of the, the team that's uh, fielding the questions, but we have a network of uh, several thousand uh, volunteers in uh, industry and academia and government who we can reach out to to help answer those questions. And they, they've done things like uh, uh, worked on CFIUS requests, uh, um, but they're available. And uh, if you're interested as a subject matter expert in uh, sharing your knowledge and helping to answer those questions, uh, that's something that uh, they're constantly looking for uh, in the IAC uh, activity. How does DTIC collect and disseminate information today, and how is that evolving? So DTIC traditionally uh, collected uh, uh, reports one by one um, because they're, do they're done in such a dispersed and disseminated uh, way, right? So each researcher at a university is doing their work, and so we collect them uh, uh, individually. What we're moving to, though, is a much more automated uh, process where what we want to do is we want to uh, have an e-commerce-like platform that helps with uh, remembering a person's name, their organization, what they support, the areas that they're working in. So we can pre-fill a lot of that information when they submit it to us. Uh, we're working on uh, batch uploading and processing. Uh, we wanna make sure that we are uh, able to give the people who submitted to us a, a tracking number and uh, see where their documents are. And so we're really looking at modernizing our whole ingestion system. Um, we want to make sure that instead of having several different places to send information or su submit to us because they're different tools, that it's all gone through uh, one area. Can you talk to the dissemination side, what DTIC is doing with search and analytics as well? So we're really in a, in a place in technology and in information management today where we think we can totally change the way we're approaching our, our mission. In the past, uh, you know, you would come to DTIC because you wanted a document or you wanted a uh, answer to a, a question through a query. Um, today, as we are using the cloud and, and have access to AI and ML, what we wanna do is really paint for you the landscape of uh, the area that you're interested in. And so if you come to DTIC because you wanna get a security classification guides on a topic, we wanna be able to give you all of the information that we have about that topic. We want to run seven or eight queries in the background and help fuse the data together and really give you that uh, understanding of what's happening in the technology area. Um, we want to look where uh, people are working together and uh, how technologies are maturing and answer questions. And so we're looking at changing the way we answer uh, those questions, not just text answers, but visually and uh, with graphs and in other ways that help people understand what's going on in, in the uh, in the S and T community. Who are DTIC's partners, and what is DTIC looking to industry for help with? So, uh, DTIC uh, works all across the S and T enterprise. As we are working on uh, um, our modernization on. Uh, on our uh, advancing our technologies. We are working with the Air Force in their Cloud One uh, environment. We've worked with Defense Innovation Unit to discover uh, solutions and possibilities. Uh, the Joint Reserve Directorate is a group of people in r and &E who uh, in their reserve duties uh, come in and use their expertise in industry uh, to uh, help guide us. And uh, they've worked with us on our architecture and done market surveys. Uh, we work a lot with the Chief Digital Intelligence uh, Office and the uh, the CDO and R&E, um, and we've been working with r and &E, I'm sorry, with Advana, um, because we're both giving them information. We want to make sure that we can access uh, tools that they have. Um, but beyond that, when we talk about the research community, we work uh, closely with uh, the the Basic Research Office and the uh, uh, the community that is involved with uh, basic research and in, in, in academia. I'm sorry. Um, and uh, Arun mentioned earlier in the introduction, uh, we have the uh, research data working group, and that group is really meant to help us look at uh, new things and new areas, including uh, digital data sets. One of Ms. Shu's priorities is to trace that tech transition. What is DTIC doing to trace transition, and how can industry support those efforts? So, one of DTIC's real, you know, fundamental uh, mission areas is to enhance the return on investment for S&T. 
So, uh, you know, we talk about collecting the information, making it available. That's so that we memorialize discovery and innovation, uh, that we don't lose it, that the uh, investment is not lost when someone retires or, or changes jobs. Um, but one of the things that we, we know that we need to do in, uh, in research is show that the work that's being done uh, uh, culminates in a, in, a, in a solution, a product, a service, a, uh, an advantage on the battlefield. Um, and so uh, we're trying to show how we can trace uh, those steps. We have uh, challenges because of the way money is uh, binned and uh, the way programs are marked. And so we, what we're doing is we're working with uh, the uh, r and &E, uh, CDO and looking at uh, how we can uh, uh, delve into our, our data, add to it other collections, um, see what we can put together to trace both the funding and the, and the tech maturity and, uh, and show where we're having uh, outcomes that are advancing and uh, um, demonstrate the value of the s and DTIC has four priorities for our modernization. Can you highlight those? So uh, um, we've identified four, I think, baseline areas as we try to modernize. The first is to make sure that we're always on and available um, uh, so that um, when, we, uh, when someone comes to us, they can get the information they need. And that's just a basic fundamental element. Uh, then we uh, are working on the, uh, the submission of content that I talked about. We are overhauling the way we do search and analysis. And to add to that discussion, we're working on uh, data sets. And so uh, when people do research, they produce data sets. Those data sets have been used by uh, the office or the group that uh, does the work and then they're held there. And we're looking at how we can collect those and make them more available, how we can help people find them, how we can move them around. Um, um, Michelle had asked me in the last question, uh, how industry can participate in all this. And so um, when we look at something like uh, data sets, um, we have a, a challenge both in the size and the understanding, the tools uh, to interrogate them over time. We have the cyber uh, issue. And so we're looking at what industry is doing on the open science and the rest of the federal government and having repositories and seeing how we can bring that inside the firewall. Um, we are trying to look across our, our modernization at uh, how we can use software as a service provided by industry to really move us away from having to do the basic technologies and focus on the outcomes and the, and the strategies and the way we're modeling our work. And so we looked at industry across a wide range of activities to help us uh, solve problems, uh, understand our data. Um, you know, we, we have 4.7 million records and it's too many for anyone to digest. When, um, when the uh, COCOMs come with their IPLs, their integrated priority list on an annual basis, and we want to match that to ongoing projects across the department, uh, it takes us months to read them, interpret them, and try to uh, query our databases. We're looking at tools that can uh, match uh, similar uh, technologies or take a, a problem and match it to a solution to look at work that is being done uh, in different places and uh, bring them together to tell people here are other projects and people working on things. And so um, as we do our modernization, we're really looking at how we can tell the full story of what's going on, not just answer questions. Over the next three years, DTIC has quite a few deliverables. Can you highlight some of those and that are planned as part of the modernization? So as we modernize, um, uh, you know, we have a, a series of milestones and, and objectives and, and in all projects, uh, we find that as we're going through it, we need to sometimes change directions and, uh, and uh, we look at how we're approaching it. Um, today, we are uh, uh, in the process of making sure that we migrate into the Air Force's Cloud One environment. We're setting up our, uh, our Nippernet uh, CUI tools in that arena. We're rebuilding uh, tools from scratch to work in uh, the Microsoft Azure platform uh, to uh, take full advantage of what Microsoft offers. Um, we continue to look at our identity management and uh, user access controls and how we can uh, simplify them and, and navigate uh, the myriad of things that we have. Um, so for this year, our goal is to do uh, that migration for uh, unclassified uh, sensitive material next year, do the classified material. Uh, and then once we've established those two uh, uh, areas, um, 
we really want to get into improving and modeling the information we're giving out to uh, uh, look at what our users are doing. We want to, we want to collect metrics and watch them uh, and see when they're getting their questions answered and understand what their roles are so that when they come to us, uh, we can tell them all about what they're interested in. We can tell them when new information comes in. Um, and so our, our modernization is really not going to conclude with this, uh, this, this roadmap. It's going to continue on because what we're trying to do is lay, lay a foundation for continuous additions of uh, technologies. And we'll continue to look to industry to uh, give us additional capabilities. How can industry access the information that DTIC has? So uh, DTIC has uh, uh, is is on uh, three main uh, areas on the uh, on the on the network. Uh, we have our public internet access through discover.dtic.mil, and if you are uh, uh, anyone in the world, you can get to our information, our final technical reports, and and do searches um, of 800,000 documents. You can uh, uh, log into the information analysis centers. They have access to webinars. Uh, to uh, information, uh, to uh, state-of-the-art reports in different technology areas. Um, in uh, pub defense is an area that we have been uh, supporting uh, the Office of Science and Technology Policy on uh, uh, free and open access to journal articles that were funded by the Department uh, of Defense, the federal government. And so in pub defense, we uh, gather up uh, many of those uh, journal articles and make them available uh, at, at no cost. Um, the uh, uh, Office of Science and Technology Policy has uh, mod modified that, uh, that policy to eliminate an embargo. And so we're working on that plan right now. And so uh, as we work on our pub defense, it will be expanding the, uh, the journal articles that are available. You can uh, uh, get a, uh, an overview of uh, DOD grants that are, uh, have been let and see what's really going on in our, in our academic en endeavors. When you, uh, 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 look to our, our CUI network. Um, if you have that credential, if you um, uh, are working on a current duty project and you have a CAT card, um, you can work with your core or your, uh, your CO to uh, get approval for access to DTIC. And from there, uh, you can see the, the full range of our information. Um, you can access the uh, articles in the Journal of uh, Research and Engineering. Um, we have a, a tool called Horizons where you can uh, see what's going on with our, our budget request and how it's uh, moving through Congress so that you're interested in a certain area um, and you wanna know what the funding uh, looks like and how it's coming through this year. Uh, we're, we're tracing that. Um, you can look at uh, um, the CIBR information and the, uh, uh, as I mentioned, the security classification guides. It gives you a broad access to uh, uh, different technologies. And uh, we have a collaboration area that is available to anyone. Uh, it's in a wiki format, so you can create your own area and work with other uh, uh, parts of the department. Uh, and then we move all that up to the CIPRANET side, uh, where if you have those credentials, you can do all those same functions, but at a, at a classified level. So one of the questions we received is, how does uh, DTIC host the NDIA conference proceedings? And those are available on our discover.dtic.mil uh, site on our public website, as well as part of the collection. Yes, yeah, so we have the NDIA collection available uh, publicly, uh, and we add it to the collection so that it's one of the things that you discover when you're, when you're doing searches. And we've had that relationship for uh, a long time, and it's been very beneficial, I think, to uh, both us and NDIA. Uh, so that brings us to the end of the presentation. Do you have any closing thoughts you would like to share with the audience? I obviously talked way too fast. I'm sorry. Um, you know, um, I think one of the things that we would like to get out of this uh, uh, webinar is, is your feedback and your, uh, uh, your input on, uh, on what you would like from DTIC, what information you're looking for, um, how uh, we can make your information um, more uh, valuable inside the community, um, uh, what challenges you have with accessing information. Um, I think that uh, um, one of the things that we'd like is your ideas on, on managing uh, technology. As we move into artificial intelligence and machine learning, it's a very uh, 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 wide open arena that gives us a lot of opportunities. We're looking for ways we can present information, ways we can make it more understandable, uh, help people 
um, map relationships, understand who the experts are, uh, know where work is maturing and which labs are making the most progress. Um, and so uh, um, we're really open to getting your suggestions, your ideas. Uh, we're also looking for how we can help industry understand what the department is doing. Uh, one of the things that I, um, I didn't mention is uh, uh, we know that there's a challenge in people uh, in business development getting access uh, to things like the uh, uh, combatant command uh, integrated priority list uh, challenges. And so um, knowing that there's not really a, a, a network way to do it, we've created a reading room uh, at the annual post conferences that PACOM does. We make that reading room available, but we have it at DTEC year round. So if you uh, have a, a clearance, uh, you can request and we can get approval by the COCOMs for you to look through the uh, the requirements that uh, a large number of the COCOMs have, and, and you can uh, read those things and, and get a, a sense of what they're looking for. And we give you the contact points in the, in the COCOMs to help you uh, reach out to them. So uh, at, at the end of the day, uh, DTIC knows that um, uh, technology has advanced to the point that we can change the way we're presenting information. And we wanna make sure that the outcome of the research that you're doing is uh, taken advantage of, but we also, uh, give you a way to understand what's going on and how you can participate and support it. Well, that was great, uh, Christopher. Thanks very much for that presentation and demonstrating again that DTIC is about the efficient delivery of useful information, You're doing it in such an efficient and expeditious manner. I, I appreciate that. And your, your staff also has been very good at that uh, answering questions. You guys can look in the chat that the, some of the questions that have been posted have already been answered. Others came in and um, I actually have some, so if you don't mind, let me just ask a couple more. Um, is there uh, a way that uh, a regular citizen, maybe not even affiliated with the company, can get past that public access to go up to the next level of access? Are there any, any opportunities to do that? There, there is a, uh, uh, an opportunity, it's a little bit challenging. So if you're aware of information, um, uh, you can request that the uh, organization that made it CUI or limited uh, will make it available to you. And so uh, we have a, a forms process. It's somewhat like the FOIA process where you can ask and uh, receive information. Um, what we have to do is route it through the organization that created the information and they make a determine if they, determination if they can lower the uh, the access threshold. Um, uh, many government funded programs are these days producing software codes and tools that are useful to other members of the DOD ecosystem, whether they're in government, academia, and industry. Does DTIC currently have a repository to host those codes uh, or is it planning to try to develop such, that kind of a repository? As we look at data sets, um, that's actually one of the challenges uh, that we uh, are trying to investigate. And, and the, the, uh, the thing that we're looking at with data sets is um, if it requires code to interpret it, to use it, how do we sustain that code and make it available to others without the, the cyber management of it, right? And so um, uh, code just standalone that isn't being maintained, uh, it can tend to be a, a risk because we know that vulnerabilities pop up in both the underlying software or mistakes in the, in the software. And so we're really trying to investigate how we would do that. Would we put code into a virtual machine and try to isolate it or earn to a container? Um, and so that's part of our, our looking at, I think, data sets. And if we can solve it with data sets, we can probably expand on that idea. Um, today though, uh, we're really trying to look at how we could make and maintain that software and make it usable. Um, in, in, in a way that uh, doesn't put people at risk. And again, like you mentioned in the presentation, you're, uh, you're always open for engagement with industry and ideas, both on kinds of data sets that'd be useful and new technology approaches, new methodologies to actually store and access that data. I mean, that's part of your open door sort of discussion policy with industry that, uh, that I think you mentioned during the presentation. Yes, yeah, so um, um, I try to make sure that uh, I am keeping abreast of uh, 
different opportunities and realizing that uh, um, each company or each uh, uh, activity uh, has a different way of looking at it. And, and as we're looking at um, some of these things with AI and ML, where you're doing a model and it's trying to do predictions, we understand that each one of those is biased. And so uh, we don't actually just want to have one solution. Uh, one of the things that we do is we try to look at documents and, and categorize them uh, to the uh, critical technology areas or different areas of science. And what we know is that um, the answer that comes out of a single model um, is, is going to have a certain amount of accuracy. And so we want to look at different ways of doing it, kind of like hurricane modeling. Um, when, when we try to do predictions on, um, on uh, technology maturity or uh, similar of documents, we're, we're really looking to have multiple ways of uh, modeling it because we want to increase the confidence we give our users as what the outcome is. And so we're not just looking for a solution if we can find uh, uh, a, a several and, and merge them together, I think that gives a better outcome. So we're, we're both open to uh, what people are looking at and, and not really thinking that there's going to be a single uh, answer. We want to continuously look at how we can improve those things. Uh, another question from the audience. Uh, could you talk about how DTIC coordinates with the other DOD s &T organizations, both inside and outside r &E? Citra, DIU, those other places, more independent places like DARPA. How, how do you coordinate with all of those different organizations? So we we try to participate in the different activities. The uh, the DBRAG, um, the Defense Basic Research Advisory Group, um, is a, a key way that we uh, maintain connections with the uh, the basic research activities. Um, we attend uh, the different uh, S and T reviews and organization meetings, the, the, the different FFRDC uh, activities. Uh, and then we uh, obviously work directly with uh, the, the other organizations in the DC in the ST uh, um, uh, deputy CTO arena. And so um, we're trying to uh, uh, reach out now that we've gotten past the whole COVID, can't uh, go anywhere or see anyone. We're setting up an, a, a, a number of different visits. Uh, we're gonna go up to, uh, uh, ARL, AFRL, ONR, and try to make sure that we're connecting. And, and we try to do it through conferences and uh, different engagements. And so um, uh, by attending things like the NDI conference and the post conference, we're trying to uh, engage again. But it is a, a difficult challenge with the, the number of labs and how we're spread out and, and the circumstances for the last couple of years. One of the approaches that, that r and &E is using to sort of um, prioritize and bucket the technical areas, which is, I think, proving beneficial both for the that government ecosystem you're talking about and for NDIA members, is to, is to think about critical technology areas. And so currently, Ms. Shu has listed 14 critical technology areas. How are you approaching those critical technology areas in terms of your products and services? And, and I think from an industry perspective, do you have any guidance on how they can learn how to learn about those CTAs and then maybe specify it in their online activities? So um, the CTO website, uh, uh, I think it's www.cto.mil um, is where Ms. Shu posts those and they can learn a lot about um, the uh, critical technology areas. Uh, what DTIC has done is um, uh, we've gone through our uh, collection and uh, not just new documents that are coming in and try to tag them with those technology areas, but we're looking at how we can look at all the past research that come in and align it, which requires some uh, semantics and other things because terminology have changed over time, right? We didn't use the term hypersonic 10 years ago or so, um, um, but we're trying to make sure that we can help people reference that. And, and one of the challenges that we have in the department is we categorize things in a lot of different ways, right? We have the CTOs, we have the, the communities of interest, uh, we have uh, other uh, ways that we've been things. And so we're trying to make sure that we can give people that, that bigger picture um, without, uh, without being confusing. Uh, and so as we look at our content, IRD users already can submit and, and align their work to uh, CTOs. Um, you read uh, the work in progress summaries, we'll start getting that information. And so we're really trying to help people bend them. Uh, but I was talking earlier about, we want multiple models. We want to try to um, make sure that we are uh, capturing 
from a complex document the areas that it's supporting and maybe the weight of that uh, that that document or that project towards an area. So um, um, you're not going to have projects that are really aligned to a single area. I think you're going to have projects that take on multiple of those technology areas. And there's an interest in in how much of that work is in each area. And so um, we're we're working with R&E as to how we can ask that question and how we can uh, figure out the amount of resources across a project in, in each of these different areas. Um, I appreciate that challenge, having lived most of my professional life on Capitol Hill, where we would routinely get the question of the style. I hear robots are important. How much are we spending on robots? And well, sir, it depends on what you mean by robots. This is usually the, the first, first part of that conversation. Uh, along those lines, in terms of helping answer these more difficult cross-cutting questions, uh, is there anything industry can do to help DTIC with its metadata tagging efforts? So what we what we really are looking for is uh, um, um, how we can approach large volumes of data. You know, uh, so what we need industry to help us with is not can we do it in a, in a collection of 10 documents or uh, 15 documents. Um, our challenge becomes at scale when we want to compare 4,000 work in progress summaries to uh, 2,000 uh, requirements. Um, um, we tend to overwhelm our systems. And so um, we're interested in, in people who can look at those kinds of things and uh, map them and, uh, and then present them in a way that makes sense, right? If I, if I give someone 6,000 responses, they're not gonna be able to, to use that. Um, when, uh, um, when, I, when I wanna map things together, I'd like to be able to tell them the confidence and the, the why something is mapped together. Um, and so we are looking to industry to help us do that, that first thing, which is matchmaking, right? Map, map a problem to a solution. If we have 5,000 projects going on in the department right now, uh, and we have uh, uh, someone in a PEO who's looking for an answer, how do we get them to that right place? Um, when we look at our, 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 our meta tagging, we're pairing into our data and trying to make it better. Um, so one of the areas that we have is the ambiguity of our, our material. Um, and how can we solve that? And when I say ambiguity, um, your name is pretty unique, right? So you'd be able to, uh, I'd be able to trust that if there was a document written by Arun that it uh, might be you, uh, but Christopher Thomas is not unique. And so um, if you look at my email address, it has a 26 in it and that was from 15 years ago. And so there are hundreds of hundreds of Christopher Thomases. Um, um, the reason why I started using Christopher instead of Chris is because in my company, there were two of us Chris Thomas's, and they put us in the same office area so that they wouldn't have to arbitrate which phone uh, call was going to who. Um, and so we have this problem in our uh, 4 million records as to, uh, is it the same person or a different person? Is it the organization names keep changing? How can we track that through looking at uh, different artifacts? Um, can we track um, uh, a project by uh, money, by the PE, by the contracts and, and map all those relationships? So it's really, um, not just helping to solve the problem, but doing it at scale is where things tend to break down, where we have millions of things. And so we're really interested in people who can help us optimize that and get to answers. Uh, the questions keep coming, but we'll, we'll limit it to two more and then, then we'll, we'll, we'll call it. Um, you talked about supporting the acquisition community just now and then how you can help them find out what's going on in the s and enterprise that promotes technology transition. Could you give an example about how you're helping the warfighting community, you know, particularly dealing with the emerging and facing threats that, that, that the warfighters are, are facing right now? Is there, is there an example of DTIC services and products that are really being consumed at the, by the operational community? So we, we use the, uh, the companion commands as our proxy for that. Um, um, we have, uh, uh, at four of the uh, at the four of the combatant commands, we have an individual who's there to uh, help coordinate um, what's going on with the IAC program and uh, how DTIC can can help them. Um, uh, at the post conference, as I mentioned, with the reading room, we're trying to um, expose the uh, integrated priority list uh, to uh, the people who can do that on uh, in our wiki. We we host those, so if you have a a Cipernet account, you can get in and look at it. Uh, um, uh, before COVID, um, uh, we, we hosted uh, secure BTCs. We'll try to start that up again, where we have the labs brief the COCOMs on uh, different activities. And so 
um, uh, we're really trying to look at how we can uh, link them together. In our IAC program, uh, a lot of the uh, activity, the contracting comes from PEOs and PMs that are looking for tech insertion after milestone B. And so a large part of S&T and research is happening uh, beyond that, uh, that uh, initial delivery. And so uh, we really are working to uh, make sure that we're aware of what the COCOMs need. But that goes back to what I said earlier about how can I understand what that requirement is um, and translate it into how the uh, uh, research community is working on it. And so saying that you have a question about hypersonics doesn't necessarily say that it's about something overheating, right? And, this, and maybe you're gonna use ceramics or something. So we're trying to look at how we can semantically leak those things and identify connections and translate from a war fighting need to a, a science research uh, uh, um, activity. Um, and then we'll make this the last question. It, it, how, how are you approaching the challenge that DOD, industry, universities in the defense space are producing more and more, we'll call it newer forms of media, where videos like this one, audio, uh, social media, tweets. Uh, how is DTIC thinking about capturing that important information as well? So we are... We are working with a, uh, a small company that uh, um, we're looking at to help us map the DOD information, um, but also um, uh, is very active in collecting up open science and, and, and social media information. And so we're trying to um, look at how first we can help parent our own data. You know, the department does a lot of work looking at outside data, but not necessarily our own. So we wanna make sure that we're really getting the full benefit from our own ST. But then we wanna to link to those other um, uh, areas of information that, uh, that uh, help us um, both interpret what's going on and, and recognize what's happening. And so um, through that company um, and the way they uh, present information with uh, network diagrams and graphs and, and uh, uh, visually, we're looking to see if we can add uh, those federated kinds of uh, external uh, activities and support in what we're doing. Great. And with that, I want to thank you, Christopher, for this fantastic presentation and, uh, and, and the uh, answering all the questions. I also want to thank uh, the audience for your attendance and, and all of those great questions and, and DTIC staff for helping us answer them. We're going to post the slides and the recording online as soon as possible. Um, please um, complete the survey that pops up on your screen at the conclusion of the webinar. Uh, if you have other feedback about ETI webinars, especially topics that you'd like to see us cover in the future, please email us at eti at ndia.org. I want to take this opportunity to highlight some upcoming ETI activities and events. Um, our bioweekly podcast series, Emerging Tech Horizons, uh, has a new episode dropping today. Uh, all episodes are available on our website, on our YouTube channel, and on Spotify and other platforms. Uh, on May 10th, uh, we're having the next in our Technology 101 series. Uh, it's on agile software development with Dr. Far Schull of the Carnegie Mellon University Software Engineering Institute. Uh, so registration is open for that event. May 11th is the launch of our major hypersonic supply chain report, looking at the supply chain needs for the future hypersonic systems that DOD is projecting it will build in the near future. Uh, May 23rd to 25th is the annual Science and Engineering Technology Divisions Conference being held in San Antonio, Texas this week. Uh, ETI is working in partnership with that division to put together that event. Registration is open for, for that event on the uh, NDIA website. And finally, the uh, NDIA Emerging Technologies Conference is going to be held August 28th to 30th, 2023, this summer at the JW Marriott in Washington, D.C. We're partnering with uh, Ms. Shu's team at r &E and Mr. LaPlante's team at a &S to develop uh, programming for this event with the theme of delivering new capabilities to the warfighter at speed and scale. Uh, information on this conference is available on the NDIA and ETI websites. Uh, right now, uh, registration will be open soon. There's also uh, exhibit opportunities, uh, opportunities to present uh, technical work at this 
conference. So uh, direct you to the website for more information on those. Um, thank you all for joining us for today's webinar. And thank you again to Mr. Thomas for the great presentation.